So in this video, you're going to find out how light doesn't really travel at the speed of light, 299,792,458 meters per second, how nothing can travel faster than light, and how light can beat itself in a race. And all of this without any space-time warping shenanigans. Over the past 10 years or so, one of my main focuses is on things that appear to go faster than light. So I had help from astrophysics professor Robert Nemirov from Michigan Tech. He previously worked at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and he is the author of the book Faster Than Light, How Your Shadow Can Do It, But You Can't. And shadows is how nothing can move faster the light. I play this game with my kid all the time. So I put my hand in front of a light source and then a shadow is going to appear on the wall that's much larger than my actual hand. And then when I move my hand, my hand's shadow is going to move faster than my actual hand. And it turns out that this movement can be faster than light. Yes, the shadow has to form first. So for instance, you can use the moon. The moon's really far away. It takes light more than a second to reach the moon. So now the moon's up there. We go like this. Uh, if you could see your shadow on the moon, it would be moving faster than light. And the further your shadow is, the faster it can move. There's no limit. Now, you might be thinking you can use this phenomena to, uh, you know, send information faster than the speed of light. Two things. Your shadow is going to be too faint to detect. And even if you could detect it, Shadows are not exactly a physical object. They are the lack of a physical object, which in this case are photons of light, which are the ones that carry information. And photons can't travel faster than the speed of light, but also not even at the speed of light. The fastest that we know that anything can go is the speed of light in pure vacuum. But then again, we can only make approximations to it because we never really get to absolutely pure vacuum. The key thing here is pure vacuum. There's always something that slows down light just a tad bit. If you're wondering, light slows down? Yes, it does. If you go underwater and you put a mirror and then you shine a flashlight and see how long it takes for the light to bounce off the mirror and back to you, you're going to find out that the light is actually traveling at 75% the speed of light. And depending on the medium you're shining a light through, whether it's water, glass, diamond, whatever, the, the light you measure is going to be detected to be moving at different speeds. But here is where things get a bit mind bendy. Light moves at the speed of light and not at the speed of light at the same time. So there's something called the front velocity of light. So even the, the front velocity of light is always the speed of light in vacuum uh, everywhere, even in water. But in water, it's like almost impossible to detect the front velocity. So what we can detect are things called group velocity and phase velocity. A single photon of light has different speeds, front, phase, and group velocities. To understand what's going on, you have to know that Photons of light, they're not only particles, but they also have wave-like properties. And the way we're going to visualize this is we're going to need a very still pond. And then something is going to disturb this pond, and the very small, infinitesimally small change that gets the waves going, how fast that's moving, that's the front velocity of light, which always travels at the speed of light, even through different mediums like water. Phase velocity, you track a single point on one of the waves and how fast that's moving, and group velocity is how fast a collection of waves are moving. You could also consider it to be the speed of the wave in the middle. You could actually send a message at the speed of light, even through a medium like water, if you can detect the front velocity of light. But as Professor Numirov mentioned, Practically, that's almost impossible to do. So you have to use the group or phase velocities. In our experiment earlier, what you were measuring is the group velocity of light. If you were to measure how much light bends uh, as, it goes, uh, as it goes through material, how much it refracts, and how much that would slow down light, what you're measuring there is the phase velocity of light. Those are more easily measured. And those are the things that are both about the same in water in the normal circumstances that we're used to. So it's noticeably slower what you can measure through water. 
But why would light slow down in a medium? Through something, like water. What happens is, is that the electric and magnetic fields of the photons interact with the electric and magnetic fields of charged particles, things like electrons and protons. And that changes the wave properties of photons so that when you measure light, you're going to find out that the group or phase velocity is less than the speed of light. The implication here is that stuff with mass, which can't travel faster than light, travel faster than light. I'm not talking faster than the speed of light, just faster than a certain kind of light. For example, at the LHC, protons are accelerated up to 99.9999991% the speed of light. And visible light slows down in air by around 0.03%. That means that the protons at the LHC are moving faster than the light in the scientists' offices. And not only can particles with mass beat light, light can beat light itself. When people say light, they mean visible light. But visible light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum and all of that uses photons to propagate all the way from uh, uh, radio waves to gamma rays. And depending on the photons that you're dealing with and what medium they're going through, that means you're going to be dealing with different group and phase velocities. What this basically means is that light can beat itself in a race. Red light is going to go faster. If you have red light and blue light, the red light's going to go faster through water than blue light because the red light is interacting less with water than the blue. But if you go to vacuum, the red and the blue light, same as far as we can tell, exactly the same. And that's true for all types of light, all types of electromagnetic radiation, all types of photons. As long as they are moving in a perfect vacuum, then they will all move at the speed of light. But in our universe, there is no such thing as a perfect nothing. There's always something there, even interstellar space. There's particles going through in different directions. So the speed of light in vacuum is defined to be something that doesn't really exist. The pure vacuum uh, is only a myth, a mythical being. And these particles slow down light ever so slightly. You, you, you detect the phase or group velocities ever so slightly below the maximum speed of light that light never really moves at exactly the speed of light. If you'd like to find out more about this discussion, of course, you can watch the full interview with Professor Nemirov in the description. Can you beat light? What's the fastest two objects can move away from each other? What else can travel faster than light besides shadows? All of that in the interview. Thank you very much for watching.